Hi, everyone. Linda from Let's Talk Prepping. And I thought tonight we'd talk a little bit about food. And is your favorite food in short supply? And what can you do if it is? How can we prepare for shortages in the food supply? Because, you know, there might be many reasons for food to be in short supply. We've got the drought in parts of the country. We've got the government calling calling killing, I would say, not really calling, killing cattle and chickens and all kinds of meat products, trying to get rid of them. Oh, we've got climate change being blamed, everything being blamed on climate change and trying to get us to not eat meat because of climate change. We've got the war in Ukraine, which is hurting the wheat production, the government mandating changes, the World Economic Forum uh, pushing for us to eat bugs and fake and fake meat. We've got the supply chain problems. And, you know, people are growing accustomed to these shortages of certain foods, and they're used to going to the grocery store now and seeing some empty shelves. And it wasn't common just a few years ago. So what's happening? What are we short on? And uh, what can you do maybe to uh, protect yourself a little bit? We're over here at climatedepot.com. And in Germany, they want to limit you to one sausage per month for everyone. And they recommend a 90% reduction in eating meat. Now, all to, climb, all to combat global warming. And they say that the uh, German meat industry has reported that the country will be facing a severe meat shortage by the time spring arrives, and consumers should expect prices to skyrocket, potentially doubling in some cases. And this is June 4th, 2023, that they're saying this. And we go over here to Climate Depot again. Germany cutting back meat production to fight global warming to reduce all livestock on German farms by 50%. So 50%. And of course, this is all being demanded by the uh, climate change people. And he, they say pork is expected to experience the worst shortages. The issue in the meat supply are due to Berlin insisting on reducing the number of livestock by 50% to reduce global warming. And they uh, warn that this policy will result in a mass shutdown of meat producing companies and that will produce a 40% rise in the price of meat. So again, they're doing everything they can to stop us from eating, basically. And the domestic supply of natural fertilizer will be cut in half. And that's going to lead to a reduction in the volume of vegetables that will be produced. So it says, to sum it all up, in an effort to reduce its carbon footprint, Germany will bankrupt many of the farmers, have less meat available for consumers, will be paying nearly twice as much for it, and they'll significantly increase the amount of fossil fuels they burn. So this is Germany. And you're saying, well, it's not going to happen to us. Well, you know, eventually they'll just take it little by little. We'll do a little bit here, a little bit there. And eventually we will become Germany. So let me just tell you what uh, food shortages they think we're going to have this year. This is from eatthis.com. Seven grocery shortages you could see this summer. Wheat and bread, because the flour comes, a lot of flour coming from Ukraine, and it won't be coming. And then American farmers in Oklahoma and Kansas endured a lackluster winter growing season due to drought and snowfall. Sugar. The price of sugar has already hit decades high this year and is sitting at 13% higher than what consumers faced last year. 
Some sugar-producing countries, Brazil, Europe, Pakistan, Thailand, and China, won't have enough granules to go around. And then rice. So if you thought we couldn't eat meat, you'd eat rice. Well, there's probably going to be a shortage of rice this year. Strawberries. And the reason for strawberries is because California, they produce 90% of the strawberries consumed in the U.S. And they've had so many storms and the rainfall has flooded the farms. Tequila. Interesting. Oranges and other citrus. Mayonnaise. And rumors of a mayonnaise shortage started spreading earlier this year, and it's the repercussions of the ongoing egg crisis. Eggs are the main ingredient in making mayonnaise and have been costly and hard to come by due to the avian bird flu outbreak. So we have those. And then over here are 13 food shortages. So we've got beef. Beef is going to... Um, be short because we're going to consume 5.6% less beef in 2023 than we did in 2022. And that's related to economic concerns such as inflation and the escalating beef costs brought on by the ongoing shortage of the meat, devastating drought in Texas, which is responsible for 14% of the U.S. beef supply led to a lack of grass feed for cows. And alternative feeds are too expensive to be cost effective. And all this resulted in early calls and slaughter of cows meant to be processed in 2023. So as ranchers catch up, you can expect a nationwide shortage of beef products of every kind. And that's in addition to the government trying to stop us from eating beef. Lettuce. Lettuce will be in short supply because of the weather and some plant diseases. Beer. Champagne. Oranges again. Cooking oil. And the oil sea crops, which are soybeans, sunflowers, peanuts, etc. And the vast majority of those are harvested in Russia and Ukraine. So we can expect uh, shortages there. 70% of the sunflower seed and sunflower oil alone in 2020, 2020 originated in those two countries. Butter. Refrigerator butter shelves aren't suddenly going to turn empty. So in butter, it was a 9.1% average price hike in 2022 and food costs rising by more than 12%. And the dairy farm sector had a reduction in milk production, so that meant less butter. So the shortage is likely to extend into the early months of 2023, according to Farmers Advanced. Corn. Corn is the single most lucrative crop in the United States. I never knew that. The production, distribution, and sale of corn contributed to $71.1 billion, billion to the American economy in 2021. And it's used to make oil, high fructose corn syrup, canned or sold fresh off the cob. And it's an extremely versatile product. And the industry regulators keep a close watch on how much is produced. So the farmers are set to produce plant 4% less than they had in 2021. So it'll make a significant dent in the overall supply and higher prices. And then eggs. We know with eggs, because of the bird flu, there are going to be fewer eggs this year. 
So California is in the midst of the driest three-year period in recorded history, and the drought conditions will affect the tomato crops. And a third of the nation's vegetables and 75% of its fruit and nuts come from California. So the lack of rain could be terrible for tomato farmers. And bread, we mentioned bread because of um, the wheat, and we mentioned olive oil. Infant formula still in short supply. And let me uh, move this a little bit. Successful farming, this is from agriculture.com. USDA lowers a new crop corn estimate. And this is agweb.com. Texas farmers plummeted by 20 inches of rain. Now it's too wet to plant. And this actually is cotton, not a food. And then agweb.com again. Drought tightens grip across the corn belt. 34% of the corn now hit with drought. So we have, a, again, more talk about the corn. And successful farming. This is agriculture.com. Worsening drought leaves farmers worried about crop yields come harvest. And in Nebraska, a sixth-generation farmer said basically there's no um, subsoil moisture because of the rain shortage, no reserves that the roots can tap down into. And in Missouri, same thing. Ohio. So what does all this mean for you? Maybe these are not the foods that you're usually eating. Maybe you have other foods that you like and can substitute. That's fine. But what I would do if I were you is make sure that I got some shelf-stable foods so that if you do have a shortage of some of these foods, that you're going to be able to go to your cupboard and get your canned goods out or your dry foods out, and you'll have plenty of dry food. Okay, one way to uh, prepare for these shortages is to get some extra of these foods now so that if it's not available later on, you'll have it. Pick up that extra bag of rice. Pick up those canned tomatoes. Do something. And speaking of tomatoes, grow your own. You can now, it's early enough in the season, you can go out and get a few tomato plants, about $4 each for a tomato plant, and grow your own tomatoes. Grow your own lettuce. Go get some seeds, and you can even start your lettuce inside. And you might want to stock up on other foods, too, for the long term, because this is just the tip of the iceberg, I think. I think things are going to be like this for many years to come. So if you have any comments, let us know in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thanks so much for watching.